Hi there, my name's Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. And uh, this is one of my YouTube videos, and on this particular video, I'm going to cover how to test a TPS unit. That's a throttle positioning sensor. Now, TPS units are used not only on fuel injected petrol engines, probably diesel as well, no doubt. Um, but they are also fitted to a number of motorcycles that have carburetors. My KTM 640 LC4 Supermotard has a TPS unit. And the reason for that is it provides the, uh, the brain on the vehicle, uh, whether it's uh, an ECU or just a, uh, a basic uh, ignition computer, a CDI unit um, on a motorcycle, it provides that uh, the brain with information of where the throttle is position is, exactly where the butterfly valve is at any given time. Now that's considered to be load, the load that the driver is, or the load the vehicle is experiencing at the time. If you're going to go up a steep hill on a vehicle and you want to maintain speed, keep the same speed, as you start to go uphill you, you have to press the throttle down more to keep that speed. And that's what we class as putting load on the vehicle. Now, um, to test these TPS units is pretty simple. The, the, it's a sensor, so it's going to be given a 5 volt supply. That's pretty much a given across all vehicles. Um, it's going to have an earth wire, uh, so it has a circuit, and then it's going to have an output signal wire. Now, this is, this is a pretty simple one. This is a 3 pin TPS. You can also get 4 pin TPS units. Um, and most of those, again, not all, there's a number of different varieties out there, most of the four pin ones, um, rather than having one output signal, which goes from about one volt at throttle closed, engine idling, up to about four and a half volts throttle wide open, the other signal wire, the other signal output, will start around about four and a half volts, and as you open the throttle, it will drop down to one volt at throttle fully open. And the TPS, sorry, the ECU is watching both of those two, these two signals, and they should remain in sync. So as one goes, one increases, the other one decreases, and so on. Go away, fly. Okay, so as one increases, the other decreases. And if, if they go out of sync at any, any time, that's going to flag a fault code with the ECU, and it's going to go, hey, something's not right on that particular circuit. I need to flag a fault code, and hopefully it's going to get fixed. Now, those kind of TPS units are more used for the fly-by-wire systems, uh, Yamaha R1, for example, where there is a stepper motor controlling the position of the throttle butterfly, and it needs a really accurate feedback to ensure that the actual position of the throttle butterfly is what the ECU wants. It's like a fail-safe system, with it being fly-by-wire, and if it doesn't get the signals it wants, it shuts down. Safety, game over and it needs to be looked at and the fault found. Okay, so I'm now going to show you how to, to wire one of these things up. We'll do a little wire, wiring diagram first, and then we'll actually connect it up. And we'll connect it up to a, a multimeter first to measure the voltage output signal, uh, and then we'll also use an oscilloscope to see just how much more information we get using an oscilloscope. Okay. Okay, so on this TPS unit then, we've got the three output pins, or the three pins, and we've got them labelled up 3, 2, 1. Now, just to give you a rough idea, and this isn't the case for all TPS units, you really do need to find the, um, the manufacturer's specs for the one that you're working on. Um, for this particular one, which is labelled up like this, 3 is earth. And one is your five volts positive supply. And the middle pin is our output signal. And that should be between one volt and usually about 4.5 volts. Okay, so like I said, you do need to check, you know, not all TPS, that not all three pin TPS units the third pin is going to be earth. You've got to find out. You need to find a wiring diagram um, or some information in the workshop manual before you start wiring these things up because if you wire this up wrong, you're going to blow it. Okay, 
So we'll head across uh, and we're going to start to set up now to do a bench test using a, a multimeter on this TPS, see what we find. So that's how you wire up uh, a TPS unit. Uh, that's the, the wiring diagram for this particular TPS unit. They're, they all work very similar, but you do need to double check on which wires go on which pins. And the only information, uh, or the only place you'll get that information from, uh, is the manufacturer's workshop manual. So do some research, find out what you need to know beforehand. Don't just wing it, because if you wire up one of these incorrectly, you're probably going to cause some damage to the internal components. And then you're going to end up buying a new one anyway. Okay. Okay, so we need our, need our trusty um, power supply. And we'll be wiring, cranking it up to 5 volts output. Very useful bit of kit, actually. Okay, uh, one multimeter that's already on volts DC, which is good. So, on our... TPS unit, we need to find another earth wire. There we go, stick it on there. Right, earth was number three, so we'll put that in there like that. Positive, that one there, and our output signal wire, and we'll use a, a yellow one for that, is the center one. So we'll put that on there like that, there we go. Okay, so we want the signal to be the positive going into the multimeter. And the negative, we can just pick up an earth from over here, look, actually. Let's just do that. Save, save a few wires. Okay. And let's crank up the voltage to 5 volts. There we go. Okay. Well, straight away, this TPS is giving us almost 3.5 volts output um, at um, throttle closed position. That will be the position that the throttle's in at idle. Now, to manipulate the TPS, uh, the input is in the back here, so we'll just use a little screwdriver. And if we just turn that round, just very carefully, up to maximum. And we've got four point, or near enough five volts. So we're getting full voltage output. That's a little high to what I would expect on a TPS unit, but hey, you know, at least it's giving us what we'd expect to see. It's, it's, it's almost there. Uh, usually about four and a half is the maximum. Now, the other test, we've done minimum voltage, we've done maximum voltage. We also need to test uh, the linear output. Um, as the, We need to make sure that, that voltage creeps up slowly as the throttle slowly is opened. If for any reason it jumps straight up um, or it suddenly drops back down again, then that would give, it, give us um, the evidence that we need to say that the uh, the track inside that variable resistor has got some corrosion damage or it's faulty. There's, there's some issue with it. We can't get in there to see it, so this is how we can tell what's going on. Okay, so as we turn this very, very slowly, that voltage should climb and it should only ever go up. It should never drop back down again. And it should climb progressively. Now, already it's dropped down twice. Hard to see on a voltmeter. We had a sudden spike there. Slowly climbing, slowly turning that spindle more and more towards the full, full fully open position. Right, it seems to have settled down a bit now. It's doing what it should do. But there was de it definitely appeared to be some problems uh, on the track on the the lower half, so sort of the first third to the first half of the travel of the TPS. Yeah, so we're not bad there. So we can go back and we'll just test it again. Again, should only increase. It should never drop back down again. Well, it's a bit iffy, um, so we've got suspect track problems and we've got a definite issue with the output voltage at uh, throttle closed position. It should be a lot lower than that in anybody's book. Okay, 
Um, so it, it's all, multimeters you can use for testing TPS, they do work. Let's chuck on there an oscilloscope and see if we get any better um, representation of the data. Right, we'll just back that off, make it safe, pull out the wires, and we'll bring in the oscilloscope. Okay, so Earth positive, turn it on. Okay, so we're on um, A is 2 volts, and we're on 2 seconds um, time frame as regards per square. Okay, let's crank up the voltage. You should see that line climb up to about 3.5 volts. Yep, there we go, look. Okay, so we're getting about the same voltage reading as we were um, at... Uh, the idle position on the TPS, we're getting about 3.4 volts. Now, with the oscilloscope, with it having a graph, if there's any sudden drops in voltage as the, the arm, as we rotate the actual input, and I'm only ever rotating it, I'm not uh, turning it backwards, it's going clockwise all the way around. As we turn that round, we can see on the graph, if there's any sudden drops in voltage, we'll see that very clearly on the graph as a, as a dip back down again and it should only ever go up while I'm turning it clockwise and it should only ever come down while I'm turning it anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise would be the equivalent of throttle closing. Okay, so that's throttle maximum fully open and we're getting 4.9 volts which is equivalent to what we're getting on the multimeter. Now as I slowly turn that TPS back again if it spikes upwards or suddenly drops significantly, then we know again there's a problem with the track. Now we can probably improve the scale on this a little bit as well. There we go. Look. Okay. So we've got a we've got a bit of a wavy thing going on. I'm not actually uh, moving the TPS at all, and we've had a bit of a wave going on there. So using a multimeter, we were able to spot. Um, problems with this TPS unit. The, the output voltage signal at throttle closed was way high. It was about two and a half volts higher than it should be. You should be around about one volt, at the very most one and a half. I've never come across a TPS where the, where the output voltage signal at idle throttle closed is three and a half volts. No way. That's definitely faulty. Um, the maximum voltage, throttle fully open, almost 5 volts. Okay, I can probably live with that. Um, I'd like to check the workshop manual and double check what it should be. But potentially that, that's somewhere in the ballpark. Um, with the, the voltmeter, the digital voltmeter, we weren't really... It wasn't that easy to spot irregularities in the output signal based on the travel of that, that sweeping arm inside the TPS. Um, yeah, it looked like it dropped down a couple of times, but it wasn't, wasn't really clear. So, using the oscilloscope, which gave us a graph where we can see what it was before and what it is now, we've got a reference to see how it's climbing up and if it drops down or it spikes up, makes it really, really easy to diagnose faults with TPS units. So, I think there's two faults with this. One is the idle signal voltage is way too high and secondly there's damage whatever it is to that internal track. Now pulling these things apart I mean they're, they're, they're all sealed they've got this sealant around there they're not a serviceable item you've got to throw it away. I did pull one apart once and it, again it had failed that's why I pulled it apart but there was nothing to see. You know, there isn't this great mountain of corrosion in there. It's, it's the tiniest amount of corrosion or, or damage to that track it can make a huge difference to the output voltage. So pulling them apart, really, okay, you can do it to find out what's inside and it's a bit of fun. But in reality, it's not going to help you fix the vehicle at all. It may help you understand what's actually inside them, though. Um, there is going to be a new wave, a new generation of TPS units coming out soon, which won't work like this at all. 
um, that will really eliminate all these issues. Watch this space, no doubt. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. We've tested a TPS unit off car. We've bench tested it using um, a 5 volt power supply. You'll need to have one of those. You've got to give it 5 volts. And then we, uh, we, we used a multimeter set on DC volts to check the output signal. And then we, also, we then moved across to using an oscilloscope. And, and you saw how much better an oscilloscope is at testing this kind of, this, this kind of um, device. Okay, so my name's Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down at the bottom, and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if, you want, if you find the video helpful, then please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you never know, you, you'll get notifications come through about all the other videos that get uploaded, and one or two of those may also be of help to you. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers. I'll run out.